Hi everyone, I'm Matt from Looking to Bitcoin. And today we're going to be looking at whether you should still be considering averaging into your Bitcoin positions. To do this, we'll be using a number of resources that are all freely available on lookingtobitcoin.com, your number one source for Bitcoin information. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications to ensure you're receiving all of our content as soon as it's released. So a lot of people I'm seeing on social media and in the YouTube comments and such may be feeling a little left out that they didn't go all in on their Bitcoin and cryptocurrency positions when prices were considerably lower than they currently are just a few weeks, maybe a couple months ago. And this is always to be expected. Obviously, when you could see that you could have got something at a much cheaper price at even more of a considerable discount than we currently are at, people are going to imagine in their minds the profits they could have had. They're going to have this fear of having already missed out. But really, it's not always that simple. A lot of people always assume that buying low and selling high is much easier than it really is, but really it is quite a difficult task to do, especially when you consider the emotions involved in investing and especially considering the volatility within cryptocurrencies. What we can actually do is look at a few metrics to say, have I missed out on the actual great opportunity, the great time to buy into Bitcoin and cryptocurrency investments, or is averaging in, dollar cost averaging in at these prices still quite a good idea and will it still provide a high risk to reward going forward? So right now we can see the 200 weekly moving average heat map, giving us an indication that we are still, even after a rally of about 50% off the lows we've most recently had in Bitcoin, we're still beneath this 200 weekly moving average. And if we look throughout all of Bitcoin's price history, this has never happened before. Sure, we've had times where we've maybe wicked beneath it and had some days or maybe even a couple of weeks beneath this line, but we've never had consecutive monthly closes beneath this 200 weekly moving average heat map. And now we've had a considerable amount of consecutive clauses beneath. So really, if you're looking at this from a, just a very simple perspective of is the best time to buy when we're close to or even beneath this 200 weekly moving average heat map? Well, if you look at every previous cycle, we've always rallied hundreds of percent above this 200 weekly moving average. So just as a very simple metric, you could look at this and say, well, every time we're beneath, whether it just be for a few days or a few weeks, I'll put five, 10 percent of my dry capital into Bitcoin beneath this 200 weekly moving average heat map. And you can say, historically speaking, this has not been a bad strategy and definitely not a bad place to consider averaging in. And you still have that signal to do so. So we have one point towards still averaging into your positions, not being a bad idea. If we then go to the R hodl ratio, which is one of the more complex metrics we have here on looking to bitcoin.com, but just to quickly go over it, it's comparing the average accumulation price of those who have only held Bitcoin for about a week compared to those that have been holding for a one to two year time period. And we can see here, this is basically just mapping out the relationship between those entering the space potentially a bit late to the party and overpaying for their Bitcoin compared to what may be considered a fair value. And those that have been holding for a one to two year period, maybe taking these medium term swing positions, to try and buy low and sell high. And once we can see this divergence in relationship that there's a considerably amount of new wallets paying extortionately high prices for Bitcoin compared to when there's maybe not so many new wallets paying or maybe they're accumulating at a bit of a discount. We can see this R hodl ratio it gives us these very obvious buy and sell signals. And this is another one that is signaling to us as we're just hovering above this buy zone here, that dollar cost averaging in at these prices definitely is still worth considering. And especially until we maybe reach these high levels towards this sell zone, when we maybe are getting a little overheated in the market, it's definitely not a bad idea to continue doing so. And we have a similar view here from the MVRVZ score. Now this is looking at the market cap of Bitcoin, which is just the current circulating supply multiplied by the current price in US dollars of Bitcoin, subtracting the realized cap, which if we actually go to here, this is the realized price. So this realized price is taking into account the last price at which each Bitcoin was last moved at in the network. And if we aggregate all of that, we can get this realized cap to see the average transactional value of each Bitcoin on the network. So if we subtract that from the market cap and divide by the standard deviation of volatility of Bitcoin, we get this MVRVZ score, which is one of the most accurate metrics we actually have here on lookingtobitcoin.com. And you can see there is a very clear and obvious and accurate signals for buying and selling Bitcoin. But this isn't usually just a, an instant signal where you just get one opportunity one day or maybe one week to actually accumulate. This usually gives us a few months of good accumulation. And we can see here we are still teetering in this buy zone here, indicating that there is a good amount of risk to reward for accumulating Bitcoin at these prices. And if we actually go and compare where we may be in a cycle on this realized price chart, and we can see if we zoom in as we actually dipped beneath this realized price, 
consolidated in around and under this realized price and finally it looks like we may have actually convincingly broke above this realized price and hopefully can continue to even higher prices if we compare this stage of the cycle to the previous two bear cycles we had we can see a lot of similarities where we've dipped beneath this consolidated maybe broke above briefly for a few periods of time considerably broke out above this and maybe retraced a little bit and maybe even tested this realized price. We can see on both occasions of the bear markets here. And in both of these instances, I'm sure many investors as it broke up and potentially saw prices maybe 50% or even 100% higher than the absolute bottom in Bitcoin's price. They may have felt like, well, now isn't a good time to actually invest in Bitcoin. Maybe now isn't the best risk to reward opportunity. But realistically, the difference between accumulating at 200 US dollars and 320 US dollars in 2015 didn't matter too much when we rallied to near $20,000 and again the difference between three and a half three thousand two hundred dollars in the 2018-2019 bear market and about five thousand dollars this may seem like a huge amount of money and at the time a lot of investors get very emotional and potentially very disappointed that they didn't accumulate go all in at the exact bomb but this is almost impossible to do and once again after accumulating it five thousand dollars maybe you did feel like missing out in 2019 once we finally reached seventy thousand dollars you probably didn't feel too bad so just to summarize dollar cost averaging in at the current levels for bitcoin still provides a historically great risk to reward opportunity many traders and investors still may be disheartened that they didn't go all in at the exact price bottom for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, but this is practically impossible to do and often leads to worse performance over time. If, for example, you were to go all in as soon as Bitcoin first dipped beneath the realized price in this most recent cycle, you'd have got an average entry of around $23,000, which is still a great entry price for the upcoming cycle probably, but you'd have had to experience 50% drawdown on your position, which emotionally is very difficult to do. If you'd have waited for more confluence, average into your positions over a longer period of time you'd have not only got a lower entry price which is obviously going to be more profitable in the long term but it's less stressful and just easier to manage for each individual investor what we also need to consider is many will continue to dollar cost average regardless of the current market conditions and price these are just wanting to stack sats as much as possible as often as they can and this is absolutely fine obviously all of this is very much dependent on your financial situation risk tolerance and overall long-standing belief in the future profitability and usability of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. If you like this video, then please visit lookintobitcoin.com where you can also consider becoming a site subscriber to get access to live charts, in-depth newsletters, indicator alerts, private trading view scripts, and more all for a fraction of the standard industry price. And let me know in the comments down below and on social media what your current investment strategy is for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Did you manage to go all in at lower prices or are you still averaging in today? like I am. Let me know in the comments down below. I look forward to reading and replying to all of them. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.